segment 333, where we explore the hypothetical questions plaguing the depths of your mind. Mars, the fourth planet, a dead world of red sands and dried up oceans, of mighty dust storms, and great valleys. A world peppered with the bones of shattered mountains and ancient volcanoes. And some things seeming to defy belief. In today's episode, we travel back through time and space to ancient Mars, where it is believed that there were lakes and oceans. with the pyramids of Egypt. Great feats in architecture and innovation that have withstood the ravages of time. But did you know about the pyramids on Mars? Perhaps you're more familiar with the mysterious face. The real question is not who constructed these things, assuming the abundant research on the objects is accurate. The real question is, what happened to them? In an electromagnetic spectrum that's 0.005% of what exists in the universe, so mainstream science says, and we can only see a tiny fraction of visible light of that electromagnetic spectrum of 0.005%. If you take the projected size of the universe according to mainstream science, then the Earth, by comparison, is one billionth of a pinhead. You run the numbers, and you realize it would be inexcusably egocentric to suggest that we were alone in the universe. And so anyone who's actually studied the problem would say, sure, sure, this is this. The, the statistics strongly argue in favor of life. Now, whether it's intelligent life that we would call intelligent, Here's, here's, you want to lose sleep? Maybe there's life that's so intelligent, it doesn't consider us to be intelligent. The Fermi Paradox asks, if the universe is so big, why haven't we met any aliens? Well, maybe it's because they're already dead. So, what killed Mars? Scientist John Brandenburg is the purveyor of one of the most controversial theories about the planet's demise. Uh, Mars looks like the Earth would look like after a big nuclear war. Uh, the theory is that it apparently, Mars suffered a very large nuclear explosion or, or a very large one and a smaller one. Xenon 129 is two and a half times greater than one the 132. This is uh, like a detective coming and finding a shell casing. What happens to the atmosphere of a planet after the explosion of a nuclear bomb? Destruction of the ozone layer, increased UV index, gradual thinning of planetary atmosphere, cooling of temperatures, and a drop in precipitation. A number of isotopes also become present. The Xenon 129 is two and a half times greater than one the 132. How does all of this affect the surface of a planet? Well, it creates firestorms and massive smoke clouds that trap in gases. There's a freezing over and or evaporation of water sources, particularly if they're shallow. Loss of phytoplankton resulting in loss of marine life. Loss of plant life resulting in food shortages. A collapse of ecosystems or extinction. Could this be what destroyed Mars? It might explain the disappearance of the oceans, but also the survival of certain monolithic artefacts. 
As Earthlings, we tend to view history through an Earth lens. And while we can only truly hypothesize about what happened all those millions of years ago, all theories make for a sad ending for a planet that may have once supported intelligent life. Finding signs of life would be mankind's greatest discovery, but things would certainly take a dark turn if those signs of life happened to also be signs of death. The idea that interplanetary civilizations' timelines naturally exist unsynced leaves a coldness in me that I can't describe. How do we go forward into the future if everyone is already dead by the time we are technologically capable of meeting them? Could this be Earth's bitter and horrifying reality? If the Fermi Paradox ultimately still argues in favour of life, could our solar system story be a rare one? Are we just unlucky enough to be living in a tomb? Or are we ahead of the rest of the curve? What do you think? It's a very confusing picture we have on Mars. Uh, there are two large radioactive hot spots on Mars. So the potassium and thorium looks as though there was a large explosion, especially at a place called uh, Mare Acidalium. This is uh, like a detective coming and finding a shell casing. <laughs> 